welcome to lecture number seven give me a second until I get my laser point okay there you go um, so we've already started talking about prevening calf management uh, during the previous lecture and let's continue um, right so the first question I want you to think about is right so we obviously talked about um, calves drinking milk right what else do calves eat and drink uh, so I want you to think about that uh, for a second uh, do they eat grass do they eat concentrated feed do they eat something else do they drink something else right so I hope you were able to synthesize the answers if not Please pause the video, think about it, and come back. Okay, right. So basically, in addition to milk, they obviously drink water, right? And then we also give them concentrate feed, right? So at this stage, you may not have seen these concentrate feeds yet. And so they are basically like pellets. Uh, you would have, you might have seen in broilers layers cattle goats you know all of them get this commercial feed which we call as concentrated feeds because they are really high in nutrition right so they are the nutrients are concentrated compared to uh, natural feed stuffs like foragers right so that's why we call them concentrates right and then of course we also need to give some kind of a forage or roughage right uh, to calves at different stages right um, so the exact time points we will go through during the lecture right um, so now we know whether babies right human babies or ruminants all of these animals mammals right they consume milk when they are young right so why do they need milk why can't they consume the adult diet in our case in humans case why can't babies eat rice and chicken and beef steak huh? why can't they drink alcohol some of you might ask right and same with uh, goats and cattle why do they drink milk and why do they not eat grass right um, so why do you think that is right okay so again take a minute to think about it right um, it's probably to do with the digestive system right because their digestive systems are not developed yet right or their digestive systems are developed to process digest accept something else which is milk not the adult diet right so think about that for a minute and so in an adult uh, ruminant right let's say for example a 500 kilogram cow the rumen right so when you say rumen uh, so usually we say is the complex stomach which has four chambers right rumen reticulum abomasum abomasum right um, so the rumen alone has about 150 to 200 liters and it, that occupies about 80% of the volume of the total stomach right so that would be an adult animal adult animal right um, but if you look at a calf newborn calf do you expect the same amounts right um, so can you can you recall from your digestive physiology uh, what the job of the rumen is what does it have does it get uh, gastric juices um, does it have um, gastric enzymes uh, pep pepsinogen trypsinogen pepsin trypsin amylase all these do they do those enzymes get secreted into the rumen uh, what kind of a digestion goes on here right so what does the rumen digest what's the function of the abomasum does abomasum digest the same things as the rumen 
or does it digest something else right what's the is there a fundamental difference between the digestion process that takes place between these two right so think about those and then uh, based on what you just recalled do you think the proportions of the rumen would be the same in the calves right so if the function of the rumen is rumination no, that is nothing to do with milk that's to do with forages and rough edges right so what do you expect the um, composition of the complex stomach of the calves to be uh, it's as you can see it's quite dramatically different from the adult animal right so rumen occupies only 25 percent of the volume whereas abomasum occupies 60 percent of the volume why is that because the calf consumes milk right and milk is almost like a feed of a monogastric animal so this is almost a monogastric stomach compared to a polygastric or ruminant stomach in the adult animal right um, so with this type of anatomy and physiology do you think you can feed foragers to calves right so um, calves right they have a the rumen is not developed at the beginning right so it gradually improves in size and when they are mature you know they have as much as 80 percent of the stomach volume occupied by the room right but here it's as little as 25 percent and abomasum would gradually go down from 60 percent to 7 percent as shown on the previous 60 percent to 7 percent right slide right so that is one and so now so uh, so initially they drink milk so why can't why don't we why don't us adults drink milk throughout the lifetime or cattle uh, why do all mammals don't drink milk throughout their lifetimes what do you think might be the reason you know, so i can think of at least two reasons right so one is milk is you know probably not as nutritionally high as some of the solid feeds we you eat right and then another reason is that our milk is um, obviously more expensive right um, monetary wise right um, so of course you know grass may not be as uh, nutritional as nutritive as milk but things we eat you know carbohydrates rice meat and they are uh, nutritionally richer and more condensed than milk right because milk has about 90 percent water um 86 percent 87 percent water right um uh, so if we wanted to get all nutrients from milk we would have to drink a much larger volume when it comes to cattle milk is also more expensive a farmer can sell a liter of milk you know anywhere from 70 rupees to 120 rupees whereas grass is a lot cheaper uh resource right so some of them can even find it for free others will pay a much smaller uh, price than right so uh, if you can um so we call this process of uh, you know stopping feeding milk we call it weaning right so if we can wean early from milk to grass or you know forages ravages you know you can save money because milk is more expensive than grass as i mentioned earlier so if you continue feeding milk uh, it will be more expensive right uh, obviously right so uh, early weaning is therefore better than late weaning however uh, you should be careful when you wean right because just because earlier the better that doesn't mean you should wean when the animal's rumen is not ready to accept forages right so 
so what you can do is you can you have to try and speed up or expedite rumen development so that you can wean as early as possible right so recall we talked about the goals of pre-weaning management last time as you know you we want to produce a healthy calf we want to produce a well-grown calf and of course we want transition of rumen from you know monogastric to ruminant stage uh, from pre-ruminant to ruminant phase right so that is one of the major goals of pre-weaning management you know traditionally conventional farmers in sri lanka they are not even aware of this uh, their goal is to get a well-grown calf as much as possible they are not even aware that this happens right uh, during the pre-weaning phase but you and all veterinarians should be aware and not on, not only aware you should also try to speed up or expedite this uh, transition from monogastric to ruminant right okay um, so now do you think this transition is something that takes place overnight uh, today it was a monogastric animal and tomorrow suddenly it's a ruminant do you think that that's how it takes place or do you think it takes place slowly right so anything in nature physiology it's always you know gradual you don't get abrupt changes like that and even management wise if you make any abrupt changes you know that is bound to have negative effects on the animal's health and production so on right so we need to try and uh, when we do any changes we need to make them as gradual as possible and we need to be aware that even the physiological system is like that there are no uh, abrupt changes instead what you get is gradual changes so pre-ruminant phase you know that is like the first two weeks where you know animal uh, is 100 percent monogastric animal almost right consuming entirely milk uh, and then you know after the it becomes a ruminant of course you know after weaning you know it's able to consume foragers just like an adult animal but there is a transition phase in between right so depending on how good or bad your management is it might be short or long right so if you do a really good uh, pre-weaning management practice and you expedite rumen development you know this can be as low as six weeks or it can be as long as 12 16 weeks right so that is your goal as a veterinarian as a farm manager to shorten this period as much as possible right so that you can wean the calves as early as possible you know optimal in the sri lankan situation might be something like eight weeks or two months right so remember before this stage a uh, rumen is not ready for foragers and therefore not ready for weaning however you know you want to develop the rumen as much as possible as fast as possible so that you can wean quicker faster earlier therefore you can save on the cost of milk uh, that is fed to the calves right okay so now do you think this rumen development is uh, just uh, you know enlargement of the size increase of the volume or do you think certain other changes might be taking place right so it's not only the volume right but it is also uh, you know the papillary development inside the rumen right um, and then you know microbes uh, like I um, you know asked you earlier is it a enzymatic digestion or is it a microbial digestion that takes place uh, the latter right so therefore you have to establish microbes when the calf is born it doesn't have microbes it will get microbes obviously from the surroundings right from the environment um, so that is something that should develop then of course you know as the room and volume expands you know 80 100 liters is 100 kilograms right so to hold 100 kilograms without rupture and to you know uh, to move the ruminal con content uh, contractions the the muscular wall has to be thick 
and strong right um, so that is a third development and the fourth is you know you can have papilla but if they all stick together and clump together they won't be able to do their job because you know when you have papilla obviously the the role is to um, uh, improve surface area right to provide a, a large surface area than a flat surface right so if they clump together they won't be able to provide that large surface area which may be for absorption which may be for secretion and so on right so these are the four main aspects of rumen development we talk about and these are the four main aspects we have to expedite where possible right so that calves can be weaned as soon as possible right um so you might think it is foragers that actually expedite rumen papillary development or rumen development all the way because that is the natural feed for cattle but in reality it's actually not the natural grass straw water or milk but this artificial uh, so called artificial feed which is concentrate that actually expedite papillary development right so with milk only uh, i think these are photographs taken at uh, at 12 weeks of uh, the rumen now uh, so they they took three groups of calves right so they fed milk to one group milk and hay to another group and milk and grain to a third group right so grain would be what what's grain like corn maize right uh, so those are grains right so grains are more or less similar to concentrates because both the concentrates and grains have easily digestible high amounts of carbohydrates compared to grass and hay right so this experiment you know you can substitute with uh, grains with concentrates right so this experiment showed that at the end of you know i think this was uh, so this was done by uh, um, uh, university of pennsylvania state uh, right and um, i think this is 8 12 weeks i'm not sure exactly but even from 6 weeks onwards you can see these changes uh, where if you give, give milk only you know hardly in development of rumen papillae milk and hay are not much different but if it's this group where you give milk and grain that you got this massive papillary development right so you can expect the same effect if you give milk and concentrate also right so remember it's not the the, the natural roughages or wort and milk but it's the concentrates that produce the uh, best development of rumen papillae right um so you know it has to be something a chemical stimulant in these feeds that have this positive effect on papillary growth right so um, you can you might recall from your gastrointestinal physiology from first year that uh, you know there are these three major volatile fatty acids produced in the rumen by the microbes right acetate propionate and butyrate so out of these butyrate has the strongest effect on papillary development epithelial development of the rumen rumen right propionate also has to a certain extent and uh, acetate has a minimal positive effect right so acetate usually comes from foragers right so hay right so that's the effect hay or acetate has on rumen development and butyrate and propionate comes from grain or concentrate feeds right so that is the effect these have butyrate propionate grain on rumen papillary development right? so remember this effect comes from uh, you know propionate and butyrate butyrate mainly right um, so this is what the undeveloped rumen epithelium looks like and this is what the developed rumen epithelium looks like and this is your goal to convert this to this in as a short period as possible as a veterinarian as a farm manager right so that that should be your goal so how do you do that 
right so that is the question as a veterinarian how do you expedite that right um so under proper management so in a you know a histological uh, perspective right so this rumen without any papilla would look something like this see the mucosa no papillary structures so that is day three and so as you go on towards day 35 uh, you see the development of papilla slowly uh, papilla emerging gradually and steadily and then by about day 35 you have distinct papilla um, you know under proper management conditions that is if you if you keep giving uh, milk and hay for example you won't get this at day 35 even at day 35 you might have something like this right so that is why you have this kind of picture right if you give milk and hay no papillary development whereas this has a lot of papilla right and folds and all that okay right um so i uh, know so something i always uh, you know remember is um, i hope you have learned during your second year cox postulates did you learn uh, cox postulates can you recall that's like you know if you want to prove a disease right a certain pathogen caused the disease right um so this was you know postulated by cock scientist some time back you know centuries ago k o c h if i remember right um so one thing is that you have to be able to reproduce that you have to uh, in inject the organism uh, and reproduce the clinical picture right um, so similarly here uh, now if we suspect that this is done by putrid acid you should be able to reproduce that experimentally right so that is what this study did with infusion of sodium butrate promotes rumen papillary growth right so what they basically did was they took a, a control group and a treatment group right so this is a treatment group where sodium butrate was given this is a negative control group where uh, sodium butrate was not given right? so when they gave sodium butrate papillary length was increased right width was not increased uh, width was also increased see look at the p value significant so you may not understand this uh, at this stage um, uh, so significant p value if you get uh, less than 0 0.05 that means that is statistically significant right so both the length increased from 2.76 to 3.33 width increased from 1.13 to 1.31 and then surface area increased from 900 um, to 1200 right um, so so uh, so what, what is this density uh, density did not increase p value is not significant density would be like how many papilla per square centimeter right so the number of papilla papillae doesn't get affected it is the 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 size of papillae that increase with butrate right so butrate then of course in the natural situation comes from its feeding perspective comes from concentrate and so this same situation happens okay so go through this also and see what that means to you right so because of these findings you know traditionally calves were fed uh, uh were requ the guidelines were to feed calves with high quality hay right but now in the modern practice feeding calves hay is not acceptable right for this reason that we um explained right? so here's another experiment done to look at the effect of hay right? so they gave one group no hay the second group two percent of the diet was hay the third group, 4% of the diet was hay. Right? So when they gave hay, right, so this, the red group received the highest uh, amount of hay. The body weight gain was lowest in that group, 17% less compared to this group, right? 
and then uh, calf start that is concentrate feed was also consumed less by those animals right so basically the take home message here for you at this stage is with 0% hay they had the highest body weight gain and higher the hay lower the body weight gain and other parameters right so which is pretty bad right um, so for this reason we don't recommend feeding calves hay in the modern practice right so remember that that you cannot forget right see again same thing milk and hay you see this tiny papilla right at 12 weeks here massive papilla right with grain okay so how do we speed this up from this naked rumen without papilla to rumen filled with papilla right so acetic acid is gotten from porages whereas butric and propionate is produced from um, pellets right so these are the calf starter pellets that i talked about right uh, concentrate pellets right so we need to give as much of this as possible instead of that right we want to expedite or speed up rumen development right um so um, now of course uh, so this age in weeks right so you don't expect calves to eat a kilo of calf starter as soon as you introduce it huh? why for one reason this is not a, not a natural feed right so if you think about the calf's preference right preference would be highest for you know foragers because that is a natural feed resource for them whereas concentrate pellets are not natural right so if you uh, give the choice of foragers versus concentrate feeds to an untrained calf right of course when they become trained at eating concentrates you know then of course they will develop a liking towards it but if they are not trained right then they will um, you know prefer foragers over concentrate right so that's why uh, as soon as you offer this they will eat only you know a few grams so that what's that that's like you know, less than 100 grams right so you introduce it at early as uh, four days uh, they will probably not consume it sufficiently until about two weeks right then it gradually increases right so then by eight weeks which we said was the ideal time for weaning they are consuming about one kilogram now they would consume if you follow the proper best management practices of pre-weaning calf management right so that is in fact our goal is to make calves eat one kilogram of concentrate feeds or calf starter by eight weeks or by weaning they should be eating one kilogram of calf starter per day right so daily consumption if they can do that right then that is fantastic you have done a good job in pre preveening calf management right so remember that is the goal and it has been shown scientifically that the the higher the quantity of uh, calf starter intake before the week of weaning right the week before weaning uh, higher the average daily gain average daily gain post weaning right so if they eat a lot of concentrates prior to weaning they are bound to be fast growers right so that their average daily body weight gain is higher right so animals that ate little amounts of concentrates had a slow body weight gain post weaning and animals that ate large quantity of uh, calf starter prior to weaning showed a high post weaning body weight gain right so that that should be your goal the faster they grow the more they grow the more milk they will give as adults right um right so same thing and then um, so this shows the body weight right 
from birth to 12 weeks and so you can use this assuming that the calves were weaned at eight weeks of age so i want you to do a calculation for body weight gain average daily gain pre-weaning and post-weaning uh, based on the body weights you see on the y-axis uh, so do that uh, and see what you get right so so remember when you when we see this this is qualitative proof right and uh, this would be quantitative proof right so when you design a proper experiment you can't just say ah, i saw that this group had uh, you know better growth of rumen papilla than group a you can't say that that is not scientifically acceptable you have to give quantitative proof you have to say group a uh, growth was only this but group b growth was that so remember that is how you should um, you know design an experiment right? so it's really important because you will be doing uh, a small research project at the end of your final year right and you have to think of these aspects right at the beginning you can't go at the end of the uh, experiment you know a, a examiner might say okay this is poor experimental design uh, now you can't go back to the beginning and restructure right so that is why even from the very beginning you have to structure it in such a way so that you know you won't run into that problem right so this is milk only this is milk plus calf starter right so obviously their length is higher width is higher density is not higher uh, surface area is higher see significant p-values for this non-significant p-value for that okay so same data i showed you earlier on the room in papilla right so this is the effect on the rest of the parameters right rumen weight right so here actually um, p value is not significant because it is above 0 05 right so what, what that says is you know it, it doesn't have an effect on the uh, butyrate right doesn't have an effect on the rumen development as a whole or the rumen musculature development uh, the effect is on the um, the the papilla right so emptied rumen weight you know p value is significant here close to 0 0.5 right so obviously the the papilla has extra weight right so this slight difference might be because of that so because this doesn't have papilla this has papilla right um so that means the muscular wall is the same it's just the papilla right so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming right of course to prove that you will have to scrape out the papilla and measure them uh, separately right so uh, so just just go through these parameters right go through these parameters and see if you can uh, make sense of those right so this is important because um, you know you want this knowledge to design a proper experiment when it comes to your final year okay guys so we will stop here for today and we will uh, continue next week with the rest okay so don't forget to answer the questions answer the questions before you look at now it's too late for me to say that of course you know you should ideally have answered the questions before you looked at the or watched the video lecture okay guys thank you and see you next week